Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit more about theory, and um, this is in reference to demographic and epidemiological transitions. Uh, we're also going to talk a little bit about health inequalities. So the idea here is that um, as we move through the stages of development within a culture, there is a demographic transition. Um, so in other words, um, underdeveloped areas, um, they have or what we would consider poor areas. Uh, sometimes we refer to them as third world uh, areas. Um, uh, they have very uh, high fertility rates, but they also have very high mortality rates. So a lot of uh, poor living conditions, um, they result in infectious disease. So we have very high infant and childhood mortality rates. Um, as the public health conditions start to improve, as they start to get access to improved sanitation, um, better nutrition, the mortality rates will start to decrease, and for a little while anyway, their fertility rates remain high. All right, so good example of this, 1900 or so uh, in the United States, the main causes of death were things like tuberculosis and influenza. Um, by the 1960s or so, we'd gotten a pretty good handle on infectious disease, and now the main causes of, de of death are uh, lifestyle-related, things like cardiovascular disease and cancer. Um, so that's kind of the next stage in development, the next areas that we need to uh, take care of. So again, as fertility and mortality rates start to drop off, mortality is generally related to chronic non-communicable diseases, um, which affect older populations. So essentially people are living long enough to develop heart disease. Um, they've seen changes in cardiovascular disease patterns um, consistent with these types of transitions. So in 1992, the World Health uh, Organization predicted that cardiovascular disease would be the leading cause of death worldwide by 2020. And they're actually a little bit early with that. I, I'm pretty sure right now the leading cause of death worldwide is cardiovascular disease. So there's a couple different reasons for this. Part of that is because the life expectancy throughout the world has increased. So it sounds kind of funny to say it, but some people are living long enough to get cardiovascular disease. So in some ways it's good news. But um, it's also uh, part of that is also that the obesity rate throughout the world is increasing significantly. That's, that's not just a problem in the United States anymore. That's a problem in places like Mexico, um, Australia. Australia has, actually has a bigger problem with obesity than we do. Um, throughout Europe, there's some issues. So, um, you know, part of it is, is that we're living long enough. And the other part, maybe even a bigger part, is the, uh, is the adoption of the Western-style diet that a lot of people are, are um, taking up. So... Not real good news on that front. Um, infant mortality rate is still relatively low in developed nations. Um, rates in the developing nations and the least developed nations are much higher. Um, we're going to take a look at some of those. In the United States, we still have a pretty high infant mortality rate. Uh, top five causes of death worldwide uh, in children. Um, malaria is still a big problem. It's unfortunate uh, in certain parts of the world. Uh, pneumonia is still a big problem for kids. Um, and you look at some of these, you know, a lot of these are preventable, especially with vaccination. So it's kind of a, it's kind of sad to see this. HIV obviously is a, is a major pandemic, um, but measles, you know, malaria, uh, these things are preventable. Um, in the United States, uh, it's actually due to accidents. Um, so everybody's so worried about, you know, uh, stranger danger and things like that. Actually, drowning is a, is a major cause of death in children. Uh, I think the number one cause of death in children is actually car accidents. Um, uh, uh, stranger, uh, being uh, kidnapped by a stranger, someone that you don't know, doesn't even make the top 1,000. Um, being uh, being killed in a school shooting, yeah, you're about as children are about as likely to be killed in a school shooting as be struck by killed by uh, a bolt of lightning. That's how rare it is, and yet. Um, that's what you know makes the news all the time. It's the the main causes of death are car accidents, drownings, and abuse by someone that they know, a family member. So um, it's kind of kind of a big difference between what the media portrays and what what is actually going on. Uh, health disparities, so health inequalities, big problem uh, throughout the world, but in particular here in the United States. Um, the United States, we rank twenty seventh in life expectancy right now, according to the Center for Disease Control. Uh, according to the CIA, they collect a lot of data on this, we rank 50th, that's 5-0, in infant mortality rate. Uh, that's the number of babies 
uh, that do not live to see the age of one. And uh, the primary reason is health inequalities, people that do not have access to health care. So um, for a variety of reasons, but primarily poverty. So um, health inequalities can happen because of ethnicity, age, gender, geography, social class. Um, it's usually related to income, but it's uh, again, it's a, it's a combination of these factors. So over the past 50 years, we increased the world's life expectancy by about 20 years. So that's huge. That's a major public health accomplishment. Um, but it wasn't uniform. Uh, we did a great job in the developed countries, but places like Sub-Saharan Africa, um, you know, there's still some, some big problems down there. Um, health disparities in the U.S., again, we rank 50th in infant mortality rate. Um, we rank, again, like 27th in uh, overall life expectancy, something like that. We have improved a little bit, but we're still pretty far behind. And that's not, you know, middle-class America. That's people living in poverty. That's what's uh, bringing those numbers down. So poor people die sooner, and they spend more time with disability. Um, Socioeconomic status impacts healthcare opportunities, access to services, uh, lifestyle choices. It affects diet. Um, you know, go down. They call it um, uh, I forget, food deserts. It's a term that they use, especially in places like you know North Philadelphia. Uh, I live out in Montgomery County, about 30 miles outside of Philadelphia. At Norristown is a city in um, in Montgomery County. Uh, there are no supermarkets in Norristown. Uh, the city of Chester, which is uh, directly south of Philadelphia, there are no city or excuse me, no supermarkets in Chester. Um, so these are big problems in, in these poor areas. It's kind of unfortunate, but it still happens. Um, so these are just some uh, charts that I came across. So uh, this is um, a pictorial diagram of the age distribution in different countries. So this is Mexico in 1995. So you can see that. The, um, the highest population or the largest number of people is, you know, 0 to 4, 5 to 9, 10 to 14. So that's the biggest group. And then as you get older, the age or the population gets smaller and smaller. And it's because people are dying early. Uh, that's basically what it, what it comes down to. Um, as a country gets a little bit more developed, that um, the population distribution starts to even out a little bit. Okay, so as we get to you know, these very developed countries like Japan, uh, the, the, the age distribution is a little bit more even. Um, what we're looking at here when you see these peaks, I think this may be Japan's uh, equivalent to our baby boomer population, maybe. Uh, I, I guess that they had one too, because that's what it kind of looks like to me. And then the, what they refer to as the echo boom would be right here, you know, the baby boomers' children. Um, so this is USA in 1900. Again, major causes of, de of death were um, tuberculosis, influenza, uh, some other infectious diseases. Um, 1960, it starts to even out a little bit. 1980, 2000, uh, 2010. This is what it's projected to look like in 2030. So um, it's kind of cool. Uh, and what we've seen is that... Um, the, so first of all, this demographic model does not take into account migration or epidemics or natural uh, disasters. Um, but what is happening is that um, as the world starts to develop, um, the, there's essentially zero population growth in these developed countries. So there are a number of countries within Europe that have zero population growth. Um, you know, two people get married, they have two children that family has zero population growth because it's the children are just replacing the adults. You know, when I was a kid, it was fairly normal. I was Catholic too, but it was fairly normal for us to have, you know, five, six, ten kids in a family. Now people have two kids, you know, maybe three. If you hear about a family with four, that's a lot, you know, and that was not what it was like 40 years ago. So um, what we're seeing, you know, when, when a country hits a certain uh, uh, level of, of, of uh of financial income, there's a, it tends to have a negative or it goes to zero population growth. And we've seen that in uh, Germany, Italy, Japan, um, some parts of the Soviet Union. Um, so where all the population growth is going to occur is in a lot of these poorer places in Africa, um, India, uh, not that India is poor, but certain parts of it are, uh, Pakistan, um, 
So a lot of the population growth is actually going to come from those areas, and those people are going to migrate into places like Europe and the United States. So while the United States is expected to have essentially moved towards a natural zero population growth, what we're going to have is a lot of uh, migration coming to this country. So it depends what happens with the whole, I know the, it's a political debate, um, you know, with the, uh, how they're going to handle, you know, migration. Um, and then, of course, what's going to happen with the healthcare system, you know, if the healthcare system is going to allow access to all these people that are coming into the country, how is that going to impact everybody? So that was our discussion for this week, and I wanted you to kind of uh, voice your opinion about what you think is going to happen um, within the healthcare system over the next couple decades. Okay? All right. I hope you found this interesting.